friends this is srinivasan from the ar pro academy you have seen my earlier video on what are the pre operational checks to be done to a two wheeler now we'll go to a commercial vehicle you would accept that the commercial vehicle is a fairly large vehicle it travels longer distances uh, it covers more distances uh its operating kilometer is a range range of operating kilometer is high therefore we need to be a little extra careful before we take the vehicle out the first always would be a walk around the vehicle after it has been parked after coming into the garage or in your parking lot while you walk around the vehicle you will have to start looking for leaks it could be oil it could be coolant it could be the fuel and if the point of leak is identified if you look at the traces on the floor and look straight up you will know where the leak origin is now while you walk around once you know this keep in mind of it and have it checked corrected before you go on a long journey the next important point would be to look at the tires the tires will indicate the condition of your suspension and the road on which you operate if you feel corner wear you have an uneven wear or any foreign particle uh, that has got impacted to the tires you have to check you can also check the tread condition uh, rear tread tires the tread the flap you will have to inspect the flaps if it is coming off if it is not sticking on to the body then it has to be checked or the tire will have to be replaced before embarking on the long journey next would be to check your mud flaps of the tires you will find many of the people have mud flaps external mud flaps there is a uh, sheet metal thing that comes on the vehicle and there is an external mud flap that is hung by the drivers most of the time these mud flaps come off from the hooks or from the bolt and they hang precariously as the vehicle is dry running these tires these flaps can bend and get entangled in the tire and if it is constantly rubbing the tire possibility is that the tire could burst because of the metal components metal screws or something foreign material it can always tear your tire while embarking on a long journey and if it is back wheel the driver will not be able to observe the noise unless he keeps track of it then the another important thing is you will have to check the windscreen windscreen for for any stone hits for any mild air cracks if the bedding has come off because you would have agree that the vehicle while going the entire wind pressure is on the windscreen and the windscreen is held to the body by the bedding only if the bedings are not proper or if the frames are not proper there is a possibility the wind screen because of the pressure can come out of the beatings and can throw up surprises by suddenly falling on you when you drive then when you check the wind screens also plan to check the wiper blades for proper the blade should have sharp thing it should not be worn worn out it should not be hard it should be sufficiently soft 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 with a sharp thing so that it cleans properly when there is a rain during monsoon this will become particularly important if the windscreen is not going to get cleaned properly you will have difficulty in driving but more so in the nights against oncoming windscreen light oncoming headlamp lights the next point would be your battery of course the battery terminals normally get corroded because of you would appreciate that uh, in a diesel engine the requirement for a battery during the daytime is not there therefore there will be heavy charging that takes place though you have a regulator or a diode to cut off the uh, charging voltage but still there is constant flow of current from your vehicle from the alternator to your battery 
Therefore, the possibility of a battery heating heated up, battery terminal getting corroded is more. Once the battery gets corroded, the terminals become loose. Therefore, you will have to constantly check the battery terminal for its tightness and any corrosion. Apply a coat of thin Vaseline so that the corrosion doesn't take place. Please, gentlemen, do not apply grease. That comes in handy, but please do not apply grease on the terminals. While you check the batteries, you can also take time to check the functioning of all the lights in the vehicle, the headlamp, the headlamp, the indicator, the parking lamps, etc. While you walk across, you should also inspect the fuel tank. Normally, trucks have a fuel tank of capacity more than 100 liters. I have seen the trucks having two 200 liters uh, tanks filled on each side of the chassis because while covering long distance, they would like to fill up or top up at in states where the fuel costs low. Okay, therefore, this since 200 liters is equal to 200 odd kgs, a little more than 200 odd kgs, plus the added weight of the tank, the bracket has a possibility of getting cut or damaged. So, inspect the batteries. You can't have surprises on the highway when the fuel tank just falls off of the vehicle. Number two, look for leaks on the fuel lid. When the uh, fuel in the tank keeps moving up and down, there's a possibility for the fuel to come out. You will have to check that no fuel is wasted through the lid. And of course, the dirt tube, the fuel dirt tube, all that is intact. There should not be any leak in those areas. You should, can also take a little extra caution to go below the vehicle and check the breather pipes of the gearbox and the differential. Possibility is, if you are driving on a rainy road, on a mud or muddy road, the possibility is that the breathers would get blocked or clogged by the mud and the breathing effect doesn't take place. This will result in pressure building up both in the gearbox uh, if it is blocked in the gearbox or if the differential is blocked, the pressure built up with the differential and the oil would come out of the oil seal. You would think that it is the oil seal leak, but it is actually the breather that is giving this trouble. There is also, also a possibility that this differential oil is thrown out into the axle holes and it comes out through the end axle shaft gasket. It can confuse you. The wheel bearing grease can melt and come out. It could also be the oil from the differential if the breather is blocked. You will have to be careful. You will have to check for both whether it is oil or the grease that has melted and it is coming out. Either way, it needs to be attended to immediately to avoid a breakdown in road. Another point is the transmission joints. The universal joints near the gearbox, the center bearing, and the uh, near the pilot, uh, near the uh, pinion bearing, you will have to check the U cross universal joints for the board tightness and the bearing operations. You should also take uh, efforts to check the slip joint in the bottom propeller shaft or drive shaft, so that the slip joint is not having play, it doesn't generate noise, and it is also properly lubricated. Another important area that is to be checked externally is the steering ball joints. The ball joints come on the tie rod ends as well as on the drag link ends. Both the drag link is also referred to it as push and pull rod by the local technicians. You will check the ball joints. If there is a problem with the ball joint or it has worn out or if it is not tightened properly, the possibility of it coming off when you drive is there and this can result in a major accident because the vehicle will not be controlled by uh, coming to the internal this is as far as the external points are concerned when you come to the internal points you will have to check the engine oil the power steering oil clutch fluid engine coolant and windscreen washer fluid the windscreen washer fluid all the fluids must have must be at the optimum level it can't be low the air filter claw indicator is also given to the dashboard 
you want to check for whether it is clogged, whether it bark, whether it has reached the pop up uh, indicator. If it is popped up, you will have to check and replace the air filter. Gentlemen, the air filters that come today, the paper filters, are not expected to be cleaned. It is to be replaced as per the manufacturer's specifications. Word of caution before starting the engine, do not release the air brake because if you release the air brake overnight, the air in the air tanks could have, I read it, could have leaked and the vehicle will start moving if it is on a slope and resulting in accident because you will not be able to stop the vehicle. Therefore, do not release the air brakes until you have filled up air. You have checked that the air tanks contain the required pressure of air. Turn on the ignition, don't start, turn on the ignition and check the dashboard for all the tilted lights or the indicator lights, whether they are all functioning. Possibility of any bulb that is fused may give you a wrong indication. So check that all the lights, the warning lights or the indicator lights are burning or functioning. Then start the engine and do not raise the engine as soon as you start. I have seen this with many drivers. Start it and for the fear of it switching off or I do not know, they raise the engine. Never, never raise an engine that has been parked for a long time. It could be petrol, it could be diesel because the lubrication will have to take place in all the moving components in the engine. Allow it time, allow the engine to idle so that the oil is able to travel to all the lubricating points, more so in a vehicle with a turbocharger. You raise the RPM, the turbocharger starts functioning and you will appreciate, as technician and technical people, you will appreciate that the turbo operates at a very high RPM. And if it is not having lubrication, then the turbo seals may give away. Therefore, wait for the oil uh, lubrication to take place at the same time, observe that the oil pressure is building up to the required level and then you can raise the engine and fill up the air in the air tanks. After the air is filled up, you can release the air brake and try moving the vehicle for a few meters and check whether the brakes are okay. You can also check for the gear shifting as well as the clutch operation. Any malfunction indicator also needs to be checked. If the malfunction indicator is uh, on with the vehicle is engine is on then that uh, point needs to be attended to immediately it could be a leaky valve it could be a uh, engine oil pressure it could be air pressure so many things and they are all very very critical for the safe functioning of the vehicle right this will be two these are the points that you need to check inside the vehicle and Make sure that you are driving safely on the highway and do not use any shortcuts while driving. Have a safe journey. We'll meet you on the next video where we will talk about the precautions to be taken, the important checkpoints to be taken for night service buses. Thank you, gentlemen.